Hey guys, how you guys doing? <laughs> welcome, welcome to chapel. Um, I want to invite you guys to stand as, as, we, as we enter into this time of worship. And um, we really want you guys to just listen and proclaim the words you guys are singing because they have power. As the words that we proclaim to God and his love and power towards him, we give it all to him. And as we sing this next song, let's just gather as a community as a school and worship and sing an anthem to God.
So I know a lot of us are feeling a little worn, a little tired. I know I am at some points. Um, so we just wanted to open up this time. Um, if you need prayer, um, feel free. We're going to have some of the student leaders on the side. Um, please go and pray. There's something so powerful about praying and um, just coming to agreement with fellow believers in the community. Um, and then even as we go and we sing this song, um, we just reflect on the promises that God gave us in the past just remembering that God's promises stay faithful, even when it doesn't feel like it, even in week four when it gets difficult and we start to question why we're here, those promises still remain the same. All right, let's sing God of Abraham. God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant, with faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And then my heart, when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faith.
the one person that will hold us through it all. Come on, let your face just arise in this room. Let all our faith grow. fast. Father, I ask God that you would just, our hearts are longing for you. That is our one desire, God. Lord, that we will be one with you. Help us to just be one with you, God. Where people, where the end of us and the beginning of us, people can't tell the difference just see Jesus every time. Let us be a people that when they see us, all they see is Jesus and nobody else.
Hey, come on, would you lift your hands, close your eyes as we close out this time of worship. Come on, would you lift your hands up high, come on. Let's close out. Jesus, we lift our hands and surrender. We lift our hands declaring, God, that ultimately at the end of the day, Lord, we believe that you are in control. Surrender our lives to you afresh today. I pray for your fresh mercies on us today. I pray, Lord, for just direction, for clarity, for those struggling, God, with there's a lot of confusion, a lot going on. God, would you just let us see? We thank you, God, that you're giving us peace. You're giving us life, hope, joy. I pray, God, that there would just be a joy in our soul. Not, not God, it's not a happiness that comes when I get a new iPhone, but it's a joy that comes from the inside, a steadfast joy in knowing that we are your possession. And you're with us and you'll never leave us. So Jesus, we love you. We thank you. That's just not just a, a song, but it's a declaration. It's a prophecy over our own lives, Lord. We thank you for this time today in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. Come on, let's take our, uh, thank our, oh, wow, that was, let's thank our chapel worship team. Come on. They're amazing. You guys go ahead and take your seats and we're going to jump right in. Um, we have a couple announcements today. I'm so excited to get our speaker up here as soon as possible. Um, we've got a couple announcements, and then I'm going to welcome him up. Uh, I cannot remember who the first person was. Was it Marissa? What was on the list there? Yes, Marissa, ASG, yes. Let's get it. All right, we got a couple announcements for you. Hi guys, um, so you all got this on your chair. Uh, we just want to let everyone know that this Friday at 10.30 a.m. and next Friday at 1 p.m. we are having our ASG interest meeting. So if you've ever thought about being a part of ASG, come stop by, check it out. Um, also next Friday at, at 10.30 a.m. will also be the Res Life interest meeting. So if you ever wanted to be an RA, you could do that as well. And the QR code that is on the back of this sheet is for both the ASG and the Res Life application. So, yeah, go ahead and apply if you feel. Hey, guys. So, we have an event for you guys to do. I do. We Open have. house. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> Who so. here has been to an open house before? Yeah. See, they're fun. We have a blast. If you don't know what open houses are, they're a chance for the people who aren't up here singing their lovely worship every morning to show off some of the talents that God has given us. And it's really chill. There's snacks, there's music, there's fun, there's hangs. Um, and it's in the Loop Lounge, so you don't have to drive anywhere. Perfect. We have a blast. It's from 8 to 10 a week from today. I don't know what date that is. The 16th from 8 to 10 in the Loop Lounge. Come hang. It'll be super fun. Rachel and I will be there, so you should come. Okay, that's all. That's it. Hi, guys. Um, yeah, so my announcement is for next week. Res Life is doing this week-long thing. It's called No Critique Week, where we're going to be, yeah, just kind of addressing all of the ways that we were made in the image of God. There's going to be different themes for different days. So yeah, just be looking on social media for what the days are going to be because it's going to be just a really cool time to all be together in that. Two specific events, Tuesday night, um, we're going to be doing sex and chocolate, and that's going to be in the Loop Lounge. We're really excited. We're going to be talking about relationships and eating a lot of chocolate, so that'll be great. And then Thursday, we're going to be doing stand-up here in the chapel, and it's where we get to talk about kind of, yeah, just shared experiences that we've all had. So join me. Be there. <laughs> I just, I just love the, the one person that just said, woo, we're having sex and chocolate. Woo, who was that? I just love your enthusiasm. They're just really excited about this event. Um, hey, so there's a lot going on. I want to encourage you to continue to do what you can to be involved uh, in the life of the, the Life Pacific community. There's a lot happening, so we're Everything that's done is done for you uh, to uh, continue to build community. So um, this is awesome. We're excited. I wish, can I perform for this open house next week? Is that okay? Can I do that? No, I'm just kidding. Hey, how many of you, how many of you enjoyed, come on, the barbecue last week? That was so fun. 
Can we thank Marcus and the MSO team? They did such a great uh, job. And we are continuing Black History Month and just hearing from incredible speakers, incredible experiences. Um, someone remind me, there is a field trip happening. I love saying field trip also because we're in college. It's like, feels like you're in sixth grade again. Um, but when is the field trip? Who knows about the field? All right, let's just move on to the next thing. So I'm going to introduce our speaker. Um, CJ, would you help me with the, with the uh, and then he's going to, can we grab the, um, the, the stool as well? And the, Carlos, maybe you want to grab the stool too? Sorry, to help CJ out. Appreciate you. Appreciate you guys. Um, as we kind of get this stuff ready here, I want to introduce our speaker. And <laughs> what uh, I want to, he doesn't know this. Wendell, I want you to come up here. But um, I always love getting people's bios because I get to uh, read it in front of them. And it really blesses me. So, Wendell, you have to sit down right there. That's your, you're in the hot seat here. This, this man's name is Wendell Jake McKinney. Um, I've known him for 17 years. And it's kind of weird to say that. We were just talking to some people in the president's office. And it's 17 years since 2005, is, if that's 17 years, and that is correct. Um, and we were youth pastors. Uh, we were just a long, I mean, a long road of ministry people. Our dads are, are both pastors. Um, and just a few years ago, he started a company, and it's called Divine Persuasion, if we could put that up. And I just, I love I love him so much, and I love that, that he gets to be here with you during uh, career week, because he's really seen a lot of, you know, different things in the church world, and of course now stepping out to start his business. But I'm going to read his bio here in front of him. Is that cool? All right, Wendell McKinney is the CEO and founder of Divine Persuasion Studio. He is a second career entrepreneur with a background ranging from working at churches and nonprofits to running sales teams for unicorn tech companies. His perspective working both for churches and for tech companies selling to churches led him to start Divine Persuasion, where he knew they could solve a unique problem churches face while growing a successful business. With some mentorship from the founders of PushPay and deep roots in the faith community, Divine Persuasion is solving the design problems for churches and nonprofits once and for all. Wendell lives in Los Angeles with his wife Amy and two children who are the absolute cutest kids on the planet, uh, who are all on mission to find the world's best gluten-free donut. Come on, somebody, okay? Um, and uh, just letting you know this, Wendell is going to stick around for 30 minutes from 11.30 to 12 to do a, a Q&A with you. So whatever students want to stick around, you don't have class, I'm not saying skip class, um, but if you don't have class, you don't have anything going on, stick around. We're going to be having a Q&A with him. So let's welcome Wendell to the stage today as he's already been sitting here. Come on. Gracias, amigo. Do you mind playing for one minute while I read a psalm? It's so good to be here. I'm so honored. This is such a beautiful campus. Um, as Dan said, we've been friends for 17 years, which is wild. Um, I'm 30 years old, and it's weird to be at a college campus saying that I'm 30 because I feel forever 22. If you're anybody 22 in the room, Taylor Swift year, there you go. Um, if, if you're okay with it, before I kind of talk a little bit about myself, while the music is still playing so it feels like Jesus, um, I'd love to read a psalm. I've been through, the last three weeks of my life, I feel like I have grown immeasurably, and, and um, that Jewish rabbi carpenter from Nazareth that we tend to follow, Jesus, uh, does this every once in a while. And I, I might get emotional and cry a couple times because he's just that good, but if, if you're comfortable with it, I'd love to just start reading a psalm. Um, when this year started, my father and I um, decided every day he would choose a psalm and then I would, and we're reading the Passion Translation and it's, it's really riveting. And uh, what, I, what I like to do each morning before I do anything else is to read the Psalms and look for the carpenter or look for Jesus. And so really simply, if, if you're able to, I'm going to read to you a portion of Psalm 62, which was, has, has been a, a life sustainer for me over the last few weeks. And thank you, man, for, for continuing to play. Uh, it's been so long since I've been in a setting like this where I'm communicating, and I'm honored to be here. Dan, you're a beautiful friend. You've been, um, you've been so kind for so long. And as you get older, you start to realize, I don't need cool friends. I don't need talented friends. I just want friends who are continuously kind. 
and that is the man that you are. So thank you. So really quickly, I'm going to read a portion of Psalm 62. Well, I could read it off of this too, but, you know, I'll read it off of the actual text. It'll be fun. I stand silently to listen for the one I love, waiting as long as it takes for the Lord to rescue me. For God alone has become my Savior. He alone is my safe place. His wraparound presence always protects me. For he is my champion defender. There's no risk of failure with God. So why would I let worry paralyze me even when troubles multiply around me? Skipping down to verse 5, it says, I'm standing in absolute stillness, silent before the one I love, waiting as long as it takes for him to rescue me. Only God is my Savior. He will not fail me. For he alone is my safe place. His wraparound presence always protects me as my champion defender. There's no risk of failure with God. So why would I let worry paralyze me even when troubles multiply around me? God's glory is all around me. His wraparound presence is all I need. For the Lord is my savior, my hero, my life-giving strength. Trust only in God every moment. Tell him all your troubles and pour out your heart longings to him. Believe me when I tell you, he will help you. Pause in his presence. Before God, all the people of the earth, high or low, are like smoke that disappears, like a vapor that quickly vanishes away. Dan, we're getting old, man. Compared to God, they're nothing but vanity, nothing at all. The wealth of the world is nothing to God. So if your wealth increases, don't be boastful or put your trust in your money. And don't you think for a moment that you can get away with stealing by overcharging others just to get more for yourself. God said to me once and for all, all the strength and power you need flows from me. And again, I heard it clearly said, all the love you need is found in me. And it's true that you repay people for what they do. Um, Really simply today, I'm going to, talk a little bit more about career and work, but I just want to start with my, my center, this carpenter from Nazareth by way of Bethlehem. I think I'm so grateful for the way Mav City says it. I don't see anything wrong with the lights on stages. I really don't. I think it's beautiful, but every once in a while, it's good to remember we are a part of an ancestral, ancient belief system with thousands and thousands of years of beautiful, rich history around an actual human being named Jesus. So thank you for for hopping in deeply spiritual with me to start. Uh, Thanks so much for playing, bro. Appreciate it. Um, Again, so honored to be here. I, I love this college campus. I love this room. Every time I'm in here, I don't know if you feel this way or what your persuasion of faith is, but um. There's like a sense of calmness and stillness in this room every time I'm able to be here, and I'm grateful for it. So, Dan, thank you for having me, um, LPU. I got to meet a few of the women's uh, basketball team players, Brianna and Sierra and a few others. Uh, Let's go Warriors. Um, And, yeah, there's a lot of support, as you can tell. 17 people are able to clap. Um, Just kidding. Um, Just kidding. Just kidding. There they are. Let's go. Let's go. Um, I love this. I love this campus. I love this school. A dear friend of mine, Chad Beach, obviously alumni here. And also, I don't know if you're here, Capria, but um, the second hire in the history of Divine Persuasion Studio is actually LPU alum. Capria, are you here? You said you were. Let's go, Capria. So honored to see you. You're the best. Um, well, really simply, I'm 30 years old. I've lived in Los Angeles for three years. I have been married for eight years to my wife, Amy. We went to senior prom together. We really just got lucky and blessed. Um, marriage works out really, really well. Marry someone that you're deeply in love with and when it's the right person. So go that route if you can. Um, I have two sons. Um, and They're five and two. They're both playing soccer uh, for LAFC Roots program, which is such a joy in um, 
just enjoy being a father and searching for gluten-free donuts every Saturday. It's my favorite day. At Divine Persuasion, we have a forever three-day weekend, and so we don't work Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And every Saturday morning, my, my sons and I, if there's no soccer or after soccer, go and get donuts. And so that's a little bit about that side of me. I grew up in San Diego, California. That's my hometown. I love Southern California so much. Grew up in a pastor's home. Uh, right out of high school, went into Bible college and internship. Uh, did that for two years, got an associate's degree, and then went right into student ministry, kind of like Dan had talked about. I did that for about seven years, and by the end of my time there, I was a youth pastor, creative pastor, children's pastor, was on the preaching team, and starting to have conversations about my wife and I potentially being lead pastors. And for whatever reason, um, I was like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if that's what I want to do with my life, which is really interesting for me. And if you, if you grew up in ministry, maybe you relate where there's those moments where you're like, I, I love Jesus, and I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for church. a really successful year. Uh, I got recruited by an artist friend here in Los Angeles to start a nonprofit, and so we worked on that for a year. And then when that ended, somewhat abruptly, I needed to figure out, right, it, this would have been January 23rd of 2020. We talked at church home here in L.A. on a Wednesday night and, and mutually decided, hey, this project is going to be postponed indefinitely. So I took seven days of silence um, growing up in, and I know LPU has four square roots, which I love four square so much. It's such a beautiful picture of the bride of Christ for me. Um, I grew up in a very evangelical, you know, loud, we got the lights on stages, um, big, big music, and um, I decided, you know what, I don't want to make a decision emotionally, and I want to figure out what this, this guy Jesus has for me. And so for seven days, I didn't try to figure out what I was going to do next. And out of that, I had a few ideas, one of them being Divine Persuasion Studio, and recruited a few friends and really did not know much about how to run a business well. Um, didn't really know much about uh, how to, you know, balance the, the checking account of a business and just started talking to a bunch of really smart people and asking a lot of questions. And as a result of that, now we're two years in. We have 26 clients. Mostly are, we mostly serve churches. We have a few nonprofit organizations and a couple of really, really beautiful mission-minded businesses. And I'm so honored to lead a team of, I think we have 13 or 14 individuals. And it's just, it's, it's wonderful what happens when a carpenter from Nazareth displaces and there, what do I got to do? Don't grab the bottom. Perfect. Anyway, it's wonderful what happens when you trust Jesus. Um, so I actually, I, I wouldn't typically do this, but since it is career week, I, I wrote down five or seven things that now as a 30-year-old man, um, I feel like I've learned a few things on this, this blue planet walking around and would love to share them with you. And so I have... Like I said, five or six things I just want to read to you that I wrote down in thinking about you all today. Um, the first one is really simple. If you want to do something in your life, um, if you would like to have a career, is anyone interested in having a career where you can pay your bills and maybe a little bit more, or at least somewhat, okay? Whatever you want to do, um, if, if you don't want to do that, then um, just stay in college for a very long time and hopefully your parents keep paying tuition and, and room and board. But... Um, <laughs> Really simply, you should determine if you believe God is God of it all or nothing at all. You should determine if you believe God is God of it all or nothing at all. You can't place him somewhere between. Um, in my journey, it, it, it got really simple over the last couple of years because if you venture to do something great, you have to be prepared for the pain and discomfort that comes along with it. If you want to do something of substance in your life, if you want to have a great career, if you want to have a good marriage, a good relationship, if you want to enjoy your life, you have to be prepared for the fact that eventually you will be at certain impasses where you have to be willing to go through the pain in order to go where you want to go. So really simply put, if you are a follower of Jesus, and I know it's somewhat simple, but it is somewhat complex at the same time, you have to determine for yourself, do you believe that this God is really God of everything? or not. Because it gets really tempting as, as you come out of college and you start to, you know, figure out where your job is going to be, where you're going to live, who you're going to date, who you could potentially marry or not marry, and the, the friends and the groups of people you're going to be in, and the type of individual that you want to be in your career, or if you want to start your own company, or you want to be a musical artist, or you want to move to different places. You have to determine this in your persuasion of faith. Do you think he's God of it all, 
or is he not God at all? Because if you place him somewhere between, you will find yourself lost, and your career and your success will end up fighting for you for the center of your life. Um, my next point would be find people who are very smart and ask them lots of questions. Um, it's so funny, like I said before, when I, when I first started uh, this, this company with a few dear friends, I really did not know much about how to run a company. I'd been around a few, but it just came down to, I, I knew four or five people that knew a lot, and so I would call them as much as they would humanly um, be capable of answering. Um, there's a couple of my friends who probably, to be honest, um, were getting genuinely annoyed. Um, <laughs> It got to the point where um, I was calling one of my friends so often that I, I was like, hey, do you want to just be a part of this? Because I keep asking you all these questions and you have all the best answers. Um, really simply, if you want to do something of substance, if you want to do something that truly matters on this planet, you have to be determined to do so. And if you are determined to do so, you have to be determined to do so by any means necessary outside of hurting yourself and other human beings. So... My question to you would be, do you want to do something special on this planet? Would you like to have an impact? I'm not necessarily talking about a global scale or, you know, something that touches the whole city of Los Angeles. Maybe, maybe so, but you have to ask yourself these kinds of questions when you're diving into a career. Do you just want a job where you can play it safe? And there's nothing wrong with that. Actually, the, the deeper I've gone in my journey, and my wife and I have talked very extensively over the last few weeks even, wouldn't it be kind of nice just, to, just to really not try to do something impactful? Seriously, 30, 30 years on this planet, and I'm looking at my kids, I'm like, man, I am, I am pretty stressed. <laughs> man, growing up in church, I thought you just like love Jesus and tithe and everything's all good. And everybody loves you, and everybody, everybody's excited. I thought if you just treat people with kindness, things just kind of simply work out for you. And I'm not here to, like, paint a dismal scene, but in all reality, would you like to make an impact? Would you like to do something of substance with the, with the gifting and with the talents that our maker, the maker of everything, gave you? Because really, really simply, you, you have one of two options. Life can get complex. Life can be simple, but you have one of two options. Either you believe that the maker of the cosmos knows you and loves you, and he's God of everything, or he's God of nothing. You have to put him in one of the two categories. And so when you're looking at your career and your career development, I would encourage you to, first of all, recognize God is sovereign. You're not. He has all this figured out. You do not. doesn't matter the success. What's really funny is over the last couple of years, at so many points, I felt like a failure and my friends will come like, Dan, dude, you're crushing it. Oh, my God, divine persuasion. I'm like, thanks, man. I'm like, am I going to be able to pay everyone next month? It's different in the entrepreneurial journey than a normal career path in some ways. But suffice to say, really, really simply, are you the God of your life or is God the God of your life? Because if he is indeed the God of your life, then he's the God of your career. He's the God of your future. He's the God of your profession. He's the God of your talents. And he's the God of your giftings. Because he's either God of all of those things or you, you should just live life without him. I find it really intriguing um, the, the more I've learned about business and the more I've learned about career is it really, really simply comes down to where is, if you are someone who follows this belief system around Jesus, okay, we, we put that number one, right? Secondarily, who do you believe yourself to be? I found um, because I've been able to be around a lot of really, really special human beings that are doing really, really special things on this planet, it can be really tempting just through proximity, and now with Instagram and TikTok, we see what really special people are doing every day. It's really tempting, first of all, to compare, and comparison is a killer, but secondarily, to reach for something that maybe isn't within your sphere. And I, I, I love the way uh, the Apostle Paul writes in his epistles, not reaching beyond your sphere of influence. And my next point is really simple. What are you genuinely gifted at that you genuinely enjoy? If you want to have a good career, you should probably do something that you're actually good at. How many times um, have you found yourself, I know I've found myself so many times in life in a situation where I'm trying to figure out what to do or I want to make a good decision and I'm reaching for something that I'm not really capable of yet. You ever been there before? Um, 
like I said, I, I have two sons, and my five-year-old is starting to get to the point where he's a little bit more self-aware. Any, any parents in the room, I know probably not a lot of college students, but any parents in the room, um, anyone have little siblings or, or nieces or nephews? Anybody know a kid around, you know, four, five, six, seven? There's this funny thing that happens with my two-year-old. He's literally just running around. He wants to hug you and then fight you, and it's really simple and really funny. He's like, Dad, you play with me? I'm like, of course. Of course. Dad, can, can I have candy? And it's like, yes, you're so cute. And then my five-year-old, he's starting to ask really heady questions that I don't want to answer. Like he's like, he's asking this now where, where I, I sing to them in bed and um, tell them a couple stories. And he's like, hey, Dad, so how did Adam and Eve have um, the first baby? I was like, man, we're here. Like, I'm a real dad now. I don't just have little babies that, like, go and eat donuts. Like, he's asking me heady questions. I'm like, let's talk to your mom in the morning and figure that out. Um, <laughs> but my five-year-old is, I'm, I'm starting to see him become self-aware and express himself in ways that, um, as, as a father and as a parent, I want to, to teach and guide him. And in that sense and seat of self-awareness, he's starting to realize you know, like, I have my own decisions to make. I'm in control of my own emotions. I can, I can act in a certain way, and there's reciprocity to that action. If I hit my brother, my dad will be upset with me. I'm curious what your level of self-awareness is when it comes to your career path. I'm genuinely curious. Think about it for a second. Obviously, you're in college, so you don't have to have it figured out tomorrow, which is great. <laughs> but when you think about what you want to do with your life, are you really thinking through what you genuinely enjoy doing? Are you thinking about what you're genuinely gifted at? Or are you reaching beyond your sphere? And what I don't mean is don't dream, you know, if, if, if you're not good at this, then you'll never be able to do it. But really, really simply put, do you genuinely believe that the spirit of Jesus has gifted you in this area for vocation? Because if not, you should be asking really smart people for help immediately. If you want to be a recording artist and you don't have a great singing voice like all this worship team, you should go find a voice coach immediately. What are you waiting for? If you would like to own a business and you have no idea what it's like to own a business, go meet any business owner anywhere you possibly can and ask them to go to coffee. If you want to be a graphic designer and you have no idea how to even log into Photoshop or the Adobe Suite, go download it. This is really simple. Find something that you genuinely enjoy that you're great at and start doing it. Or find something that you want to be great at and start asking really smart people who are already great at it really good questions. Um, another one would be, I kind of said this before, but if you have determined to make an impact, be prepared for the soul pain that comes with it. I think so often, and again, seated with Jesus, I, I, I lead my life with peace. I really do. I, I would prefer... Um, to be in moments of, of stillness and silence over all the loud, boisterous, really fun events now, which is really weird. Uh, Dan and I have known each other for so long. I grew up so gregarious. I just wanted to know anybody and everybody. If I get in an elevator with five people, I leave with five friends. I'm that kind of guy. My wife, uh, when we go places, will roll her eyes because I'm asking everybody questions and wanting to get to know them and asking people their names. But as I've gotten older, I, I've started to, to dive into a sense of, of solitude. And there's, there's a difference between solitude and being alone. Being alone is not safe. Being alone, being lonely is not a good position to be in. But if you want to make an impact, be prepared for the fact that there is no human being coming to help you. Again, doesn't mean people won't love you, people won't pray for you, people won't ask questions, but you are the only person with the seed of Jesus who can control your life. I have a wonderful father, and we're reading the Psalms together. I have a beautiful wife that dearly loves me, and I'm so grateful, and I dearly love her. I have wonderful friends, but at the end of the day, if you are determined to do something impactful in your career, be prepared for the fact that your soul is going to go through pain. <laughs> it's an inevitability. You, you can't avoid it. And what I mean by that is you are going to be stretched. There is going to be seasons where it will be difficult. It doesn't mean, you, it doesn't mean that you are um, not going to make it through. 
I love what the Apostle Paul writes in Corinthians, um, that our gracious Heavenly Father doesn't allow us to go through things that we're incapable of getting through, being tempted beyond what we can handle. But really simply put, are you ready for your soul to be stretched? Because if you want to make an impact, it will be, and there is no human being on this planet that is going to come and save you. That is the job of Jesus and the job of you. Now, on, in the sake of your soul and your spirit, it's all Jesus. You do very, very little, let's be clear. But when it comes to your career, when it comes to your vocation, when it comes to your profession, if you want to do something impactful, be prepared for the idea that you will go through pain. But on the other side of that pain is you might do something really beautiful and your friends will be proud of you and you can look at yourself with a lot of self-respect because when you have self-awareness and you've worked hard and you've gone through pain and you've come on the other side, there's a sense of pride and self-respect that is so, so beautiful. Um, master the art of finding peace in the process and dream through the lens of what you're great at. Master the art of finding peace in the process and dream through the lens of what you're great at. Um, my, my career has taken so many turns, and while I was on that seven-month sabbatical out of ministry, my wife and I were making very, very little money, and we had a baby. We were making three grand a month um, in, the, in the city of Seattle. And we literally you know, would buy groceries and then hunker up in the house trying to figure out what, what in the world we're going to do with our life. And as a result of that, I had always wanted to be a barista my whole life and um, never had time because I was so busy in ministry in, in a good way. Um, so I applied for a job at Starbucks in downtown Seattle, and I got it, and it was, it was beautiful. I fulfilled my junior high dream. Every junior high are born in the 90s. I was born in 91, really just wanted to work at Starbucks. It's like you get free Frappuccinos. You get to wear a Starbucks hat. Obviously, now there's all the craft coffee shops that everybody goes to, especially in towns like Los Angeles. But um, when you go through the times of, of testing and difficulty, if you're capable of leading with peace, you can make sound decisions. Yeah, tomorrow you might not have the job of your dreams, but what job is available to you? You don't have to wait until you have the most high-impact job to have a high impact at the job you do have. And that can only come, in my personal opinion, if you are one of the people like we are who have this persuasion of this beautiful carpenter from Nazareth, this rabbi Jesus that really lives and breathes and reverberates in your soul, then you are capable of walking through any season with a profound peace and you're capable of understanding where you are now and you're okay with that. Are you okay with where you're at now in regards to your dream for your vocation or where you believe your vocation to go? Because if you're not okay with where you are now, you won't be okay no matter how far you go. You have to have peace for today, which leads me into my last point here. Enjoy your journey on this planet and love you well. Can you look at someone really quickly and just say love you well? While you're doing it, um, th this is the number one thing that has forever changed my life and helped me to enjoy my journey on this planet that God has built for us. Um, every single conversation at Divine Persuasion Studio and almost every single conversation I have now, it, it's almost become cheesy where my friends laugh before I even ask it. But we ask the question, what are you thankful for today? So I have like three minutes left and I have one last verse to read. But if you could just take 30 seconds and ask one or two people and sincerely ask them, what are you thankful for today? Can you do it really quick? 30 seconds. Ask one or two people, what are you thankful for today?
All right. All right. Well, Dan mentioned a moment ago, um, we're going to do a little Q&A, but I want to I read one last passage to you from um, the Gospel of John. Um, I was going to read a little bit more, but I'm just going to do verse 27. Um, so here we go. It, this is Jesus speaking. He says, I leave the gift of peace with you. My peace. Not the kind of fragile peace by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. In your career, you will go through times that are incredibly difficult because that is to be human. <laughs> I hopefully don't sound pessimistic, but um, you're going to have really, really beautiful times, and you will have jobs that will absolutely thrill you, and you'll have moments with human beings where you're like, oh, my God, I'm amazing, and you are. But in the midst of the ups and downs, I would just encourage you as someone who's learned a little bit in 30 years and being an, an entrepreneur now, Lead with peace in the highs and the lows, and then your life will never be determined about where your career goes. And you'll have great jobs, you'll have bad jobs, you'll have great coworkers, you'll have frustrating coworkers. But if you lead with the peace that only, 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 only this Rabbi Carpenter Jesus can give you, I guarantee you that in all the highs and the lows, you'll just enjoy life. Because your job is supposed to be something you enjoy at the end of the day. It really is. I'm going to pray really quickly. Hey, Jesus, thanks for um, the work you've done in my life. I'm so grateful. Thank you for, for Dan. Thank you for this university. I just pray for these students, God, wherever they go, whatever they do in their journey of their career and their vocation and their job, I pray that they lead with peace, and I pray that they would learn to just enjoy the journey, and I pray that they'd find really practical steps. And I pray for those who have really big dreams and they don't know where to go. I pray that you'd help them find people they can go to coffee or lunch with to ask really good questions. Thanks for being you. Thanks for letting us be us. Amen. Thank you guys so much for having me. Such an honor. Can we just thank him again? And uh, man, Wendell, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Um, so many amazing practical things uh, that we took away. Um, hopefully that blessed you. Uh, I took notes. Um, listen, I, we want to be able to continue to resource you uh, in your career steps. And so um, he's going to stick around after for Q&A if you're able to stay. We also have our career success workshop later this afternoon. Um, so make sure to, to, if you want to process, if you're wanting to, he mentioned so many things that tied in with even life skills, um, emotional intelligence, growth mindset, these types of things. Um, stop by that career success workshop today with us, and we would be able, we would love to be able to resource you in processing, giving you even life coaching um, resources, um, assessments, things like that. We want to help um, as you process those things. Um, we're, we also have have our resume tune-ups that are going to be happening uh, tomorrow, and then Friday we're going to be announcing some winners. We want to hear how you've been impacted this week. What are you processing about? I want to hear about that. So email us, ocv at lifepacific.edu. God bless you guys. Have a great day.